Hello everybody, uh, we're continuing our series looking through the book Whole Life, Whole Bible, edited and put together by Anthony Billington. This section is entitled For the Sake of David and the text is 1 Kings 12, 16. Let's read that and then we'll dive straight in. When all Israel saw that the king had refused to listen to them, they answered the king, What share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son? To your tents, Israel, look after your own house, David. So this verse marks the defining moment when Israel was divided into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom, Israel, sometimes called Ephraim, with the capital Samaria, and the southern kingdom, Judah, with the capital Jerusalem. So ten tribes in the north and two tribes in the south. And that division was ultimately the result of God's judgment on the people for not keeping God's commands, specifically the command to uh, prohibit idolatry. So historically, it was never easy to hold all those tribes together. Tensions went way back. Um, the North Ephraim had envied Judah's power in the South, uh, and a split had even threatened to happen in David's day. Uh, read about that in 2 Samuel 20. So the secret of unity lay in corporate worship of God, really, when everyone was submitting to him. It's difficult to argue, isn't it, and to, to split when you're all submitting and worshipping the one true God. That's still true today. But Samuel warned in, in Saul's coronation, even back then, that when you stop doing that, there will be trouble. And so it was borne out. Ultimately, God reduces the kingdom because Solomon has broken covenant and disobeyed God's laws, and things go from bad to worse. Internal strife in both kingdoms uh, weakens them and they become overrun by stronger neighbouring countries, which eventually conquer them and take them into exile. And later when Nehemiah is given the job of coming back and rebuilding the, the walls in Jerusalem, in chapter one of his prayer, verse eight, he says these words, remember the instruction you gave to your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. That's a quote from Le Leviticus 26. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to a place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. And those are quoting promises from Deuteronomy 30 and Deuteronomy 12. So Nehemiah realises there's this direct link between unity, God's blessing. And so there's, when things are going well, the people are united, they're worshipping God. But division and scattering happens when God withdraws his blessing as a result of sin. And that's still true today. When we devote ourselves to God in unity, there is blessing. When we take our eyes off God and allow arguments and strife to happen in our midst, in our churches, that's when we get scattered. That's when splits occur. So the message is to build up, not to tear down. But in these chapters, in Kings, they're only interested in tearing down. God says, fine, you'll get what you're asking for. So the tipping point was when Jeroboam, the spokesperson for the Northern Territory, comes to represent the region before Rehoboam, Solomon's son and successor to the Southern Kingdom. And he asked the king, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and heavy yoke he's put on us and we will serve you. And Rehoboam just replies, no, I'm gonna make it even harsher as if to say, how dare you even ask? Well, the Israelites respond with an immediate declaration of independence to your tents, Israel. Look after your own house, David. So that the two kingdoms are split, they're divided. Jeroboam becomes king in the north, Rehoboam king in the south. But both nations, it says, did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And that's a refrain repeated down through the, the Chronicles and through Kings. And both nations are ultimately judged and taken into exile. See, the Bible never suggests that God's sovereignty and knowledge of the future through prophecy and so on, that doesn't nullify human's responsibility or man's responsibility. Israel, conquered by the Assyrians, dispersed in 722, never to be restored. But the story of Judah was different. For the sake of my servant David, God says, the southern kingdom will have a future. Reference for that is 1 Kings 11, 32 to 36. 
So even so, Judah's constant rebellion does lead it also into exile a century later. Yet the promise of return echoes down through the centuries and down through the declarations of the prophets. And Ezekiel prophesies in 37, 15, 28, that the Jews will return from exile. And my servant David will be king over them and they will have one shepherd. That's in verse 24. I think of Ezekiel. Well, I'm not sure about the chapter. Maybe chapter 37. In spite of the return of Judah to Jerusalem, the true fulfilment of that prophecy begins with the coming of Jesus, a descendant of David, as it was for David's sake that God has mercy on Israel. So it is for Jesus' sake that God has mercy on us. He is our advocate and he offers us salvation through faith in him. So final thoughts. There are many things we could pull out from the text here, but I just want to reflect on that theme of unity. The people of the northern kingdom Israel, who eventually returned from captivity, they mingled, intermarried and became the Samaritans. Now that sounds a familiar name, doesn't it? From the Gospels, we learned about that kind of enmity between the Jews and Samaritans. But Jesus, interestingly, kind of challenges that enmity and reaches out to the Samaritans. They feature in a lot of stories, don't they? It was a Samaritan woman he met at the well, remember, and uh, brought salvation to her. He kind of challenged the prejudice, really. He made the Good Samaritan the hero of that parable, the Good Samaritan, much to the shock of the Jews. So we would ask, what prejudices do we still hold on to? What divisions and, uh, and things that would challenge our unity impact our church? What can we do about them? How can we build up rather than tear down? Paul said in Philippians 2, verse 2, Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for listening. God bless and bye for now.